In this video, we're going to use Prometheus, Grafana, and a Windows exporter in order to expose some Windows metrics back through to Grafana for monitoring purposes. Now, as part of this, uh, it should be noted that the uh, the host I'm actually running uh, the Grafana and Prometheus components on is uh, in Ubuntu. It's actually on an LXC container. Uh, that's just personal preference. You could do this on a VM or Ubuntu or another Linux version. So um, it's up to you as to exactly what you want to run it on. Um, to get yourself started, you need to make sure you've got Docker installed. And um, so what I'll do quickly is just demonstrate how to install that. So you want to do sudo apt get update, which is going to do nothing for me because it's already up to date. And then you want to do um, sudo apt get install docker.io. So with those bits prepped, again, that's not installed anything because um, it's already installed for my system. So with that um, ready, and um, we'll come back to that in a moment, um, what you want to do is you want to go to the GitHub Prometheus Community Windows Exporter uh, page and then into Releases, uh, where you want to go and find the correct um, installer version for your uh, Windows machine. So in my case, that's AMD 64, 64-bit um, Intel um, slash AMD based CPU and I've downloaded the MSI. So I've already done that bit um, so it's sitting here and what we can do, we're not going to go with anything particularly um, different in terms of the actual uh, the metrics that we're going to monitor. So we're actually going to uh, accept the defaults. Um, otherwise, you, there are some command line options that are detailed um, back on uh, whoops, on the exporter page. We'll, we'll run that again in a moment. Um, sorry, let's go back there. And you can see um, down the bottom, there's all sorts of details of the different metrics you may want to monitor, um, as well as setting the different uh, defaults and so on and so forth. So we're not going to change any of those. We're just going to take the defaults. So as I said, we'll launch that. Um, Windows may complain about it. I think this is because, yeah, the application isn't signed, but it's it's a community application. So I'm not concerned about running that. Um, so I'm going to select run anyway. And then we can just click through the MSI installer. So you're going to need the firewall exception, or certainly I'd recommend it, if because if you don't have the firewall exception in place, it's very doubtful that the uh, the incoming connection is going to work. Um, so it's saying about the um, the actual comma separated list of uh, collectors, and if you want the defaults, simply type in defaults in square brackets, and uh, then we can basically click through the rest and hit install. And that is it on the Windows side. Um, what we do need to confirm, we'll just check the IP address of this host quickly. So it's 192.168.5.143, and our Docker host is on 5.142. So if we go over here and we type in 192.168.5.143, and we go to... Uh, 9182, you can see the autocomplete is on there because I have tried this once before and that's already showing a number of metrics. Great, we've got a connection through to Windows. So what we'll do is we'll go back now to the uh, the Docker environment and we will um, continue with the configuration. So what we need to do is we need to go and set up the Prometheus uh, data uh, volume first of all and you do this with Docker volume create Prometheus data like so, and then you want to go and launch the uh, the Docker container for Prometheus. And uh, that's got a port binding of 9090. It's running as a daemon, and we are going to use... Oh, sorry, I've missed a step here. Um, we're going to use the Prometheus um, config file. Let me just go back one step, um, which is where we need to make sure that we're connecting to the right thing. So let me go to the Prometheus directory. And within here, we have the Prometheus.yaml file. And so what I've done there is I've specified the IP address and the port number of the target that we're going to connect to for our metrics and given it the metrics path of forward slash metrics, which is what you can see up there. So we've done that, and then we're going to now paste in the, uh, the actual Docker run commands again, now that I've got it around the right way. And we can then kick that one off, and that's going to go and pull down the Docker image for Prometheus and just take a few seconds. Okay, so that is now present. So what we can do is we can copy that address, 
so it's very similar to what we want and paste it and save ourselves a little bit of time so we're going to go 142 and 9090 and lose the metrics bit off the end and in here we may or may not be able to see some metrics at the moment because they can take a few seconds to start to appear from past experience yeah not having it so we'll give up on that uh, instead we'll press ahead with the rest of the config so I'm fairly confident this is working anyway um, but what we will do is we're going to go and create a Grafana um, set of storage now as well so we're going to come out of that directory and the command is there so docker volume create Grafana storage and finally we will set up Grafana again in docker and that's downloading obviously from um, the um, docker hub and should start up in a second so this is now on port um, 3000 on our host so it's on the same IP address here because this is the docker host IP um, that we're uh, we're going to use so we can simply change that to 3000 which will then prompt us for logging in because this is the first time this instance has been started up Chrome hates the admin password so it's admin admin is the default username and password on there and once you have been logged in successfully once you have to change your password um, so we're on in here now and what we need to do is we need to go and set up the data sources and because we're connecting to get the Windows metrics via Prometheus we need to add Prometheus as a data source we'll leave it named as Prometheus and what we can do is we can actually and you can see it's pre-cached it because I've run this through a couple of times now and um, so that is the uh, the IP address of the docker host and the port number that is mapping through for Prometheus there's no authentication or any other details that you actually need to set by default and you can click, click save and test and then it connects through so going over to dashboards immediately we can create a dashboard add a visualization choose Prometheus which is our one and only data source and hopefully some metrics should have started populating by now and hopefully something says Windows under here which it does great okay let's take Windows CPU time total and we'll go with core and I'm not worried about the actual values there and if we set that to the last five minutes we should be able to see some data and basically there we have it um, let's see if we can find a slightly more interesting metric maybe uh, logical disk free uh, no let's go with memory memory uh, free bytes let's try that one there we go that looks a little bit more interesting um, so if we go and change the um, the actual name here on the legend we can go and set that to uh, custom and I believe if we'd set that to job then that should just remove all of the other stuff and have something that looks a little bit cleaner there we go Windows Server and we can put on there um, the title which is um, free physical memory bytes and save the dashboard and back to the dashboard view and there we go so if we go over back over to the uh, the Windows host now and we go and find open up some other stuff I don't know let's open up uh, let's see calculator or something like that or paint let's go with that I can't even think where to find paint these days um, old school no it doesn't like paint does it like calc.exe or is this just a Windows 10 feature it does like calc thank goodness for that okay um, I wonder if charm app still works okay so we've opened up some extra applications we've added a little bit to the memory no load there and if we refresh that it may not show anything very quickly but we'll give it a go sorry correct refresh button and what you would expect to see 
In fact, has that jumped up? Yes, I think that has. Um, so, yeah, what you would expect to see, of course, is as the load changes, um, then you will see, well, different metrics and different things coming all the way through from Windows. Now, obviously, this is um, this is something that if you were to set this up and do this in a live environment, um, the problem that you face is, uh, is one of scale because if we go into our um, Prometheus um, configuration here... Um, and just view the Prometheus YAML again. Um, note that the actual targets there, you are having to deal with a one-to-one -one mapping for every single Windows exporter. So we've just gone with Windows Server for this particular single host. Um, but if you wanted to set this up on a larger scale, um, it's something obviously you would have to install that software and enable that firewall exception across um, a significant um, number of servers if you're, if you're dealing with a large estate. Um, I'm going to have a look at SNMP, and that's going to be in a future video, um, but that's potentially another way that you could do this at scale. But otherwise, um, it could be a little bit painful, and you'd probably want to publish the actual um, application and um, script the installation across the server estate. So um, what we'll do then is we're going to leave this one here. I hope this has been um, useful. Uh, I don't think the scales particularly well, personally, um, unless you're going to employ, as I said, some automated installations for the Windows exporters. But otherwise, um, yeah, that's, that's about it. So hopefully this has been useful. Um, and um, please like and subscribe. Uh, otherwise, we'll catch you next time. Thanks very much. Bye now.